Welcome to another exciting edition of How to Own a Young Earth Creationist, henceforth known as a Yik. Today, lesson number one, Irreducible Complexity, part one. Michael Behe unwittingly introduces his organ of copulation and urinary excretion into his own mousetrap. Irreducible complexity is the concept that biological systems are dependent on every part and feature in their current state, and the removal of a single part causes the system to be non-functional. The implication being that those biological systems could not have evolved through natural processes because they would have been unable to function and thus die before they manifested in their current state. Irreducible complexity is actually the best argument that a yik could propose. However, like all yik arguments, it is easily defeated and ownership of the yik can be taken with the greatest of expedience. Follow along in your yik owner's manual pages 18 to 1.458 by 10 to the 32nd. The yik proposing irreducible complexity will most likely insist that it is a scientific argument. Conceding this point, the yik argument must now be subjected to the principles of regulation governing the examination of scientific theory. A crucial rule of science that the yik must agree to and understand is that all scientific precepts must be falsifiable. For example, suppose that Dr. Kai Kaiser Soze devises a drug that he says will cure herpes after a course of the drug is administered once every 12 hours for five consecutive days. To test the claim, 1,000 people who have been positively diagnosed with herpes are randomly divided into two groups of 500 each that we shall now call Group A and Group B. Group A is administered a course of the experimental drug every 12 hours for 5 consecutive days, while Group B is given a placebo every 12 hours for 5 consecutive days, and for the sole purpose of multiple piles of fecal matter and short spasmodic expressions of amusement, a group of 500 randomly selected yicks are administered electrical shocks to their genitals at randomly varying times for 10 consecutive days. If Dr. Soze's drug did, in fact, cure herpes, a reasonable expectation would would be that a statistically significantly larger number of patients in the group receiving the drug would no longer have herpes than in the group taking the placebo. Conversely, if Dr. Soze's drug did not cure herpes, it would be reasonable to expect that the number of patients in each group that had herpes would remain static. This may seem to be a perfectly simple concept, but the team of reality-based experts at the Jaguar Jones channel would like to now remind you just who in the hell you are dealing with. A non-falsifiable concept would be God always answers prayers. If one were to test this hypothesis, a reasonable expectation would be that whatever is asked for will be granted. Granted, when it is not, there is always an excuse. The number two, God never says in the Bible that he answers every prayer. This is an example of a non-falsifiable concept. Now that the concept of falsifiability has been firmly established, we can move on to rebuttal one. Behe's mousetrap is bovine excrement. The imperial wizard of irreducible complexity is Michael Behe. After observing a bacterial flagellum, he believed he had found the physical evidence to support the conclusion that he had arrived at years earlier. Ordinarily, this behavior would have resulted in an academic tarring and feathering, but Behe did not make an appeal to the academic community. Instead, he turned to the propaganda machine of the religious right who created his non-scientific blather up and down the street as though he had just won a Nobel Prize. Even though the religious right had proclaimed that Behe had single-handedly traveled back in time and teabagged Charles Darwin to death, the scientific community remained unimpressed. Not to be deterred by the fact that his assertions had zero scientific merit, Behe went on a campaign for his untestable tripe to win a popular approval instead of a scientific one. In order to explain his idiotic idea to the general public, Behe insisted that a mousetrap was irreducibly complex. That is, Behe repeatedly asserted, if a single part of a mousetrap is removed, it will no longer function as a mousetrap. However, is this hypothesis testable and or falsifiable? Let's find out, shall we? 
If Behe is correct, the team of engineers at the Jaguar Jones Channel will not be able to produce a functional mousetrap after removing one or more of its parts. If Behe is incorrect, then a functional mousetrap can be constructed with all of the parts minus one. The crack team of engineers at the Jaguar Jones Channel started out by completely disassembling a mousetrap into its elemental parts. The parts are as follows. A wooden block, also called the base, a metal hammer which crushes the mouse, a helical spring that provides tension between the base and the hammer, a pin to hold the hammer in place until released, a sensitive latch that will release when slight pressure is applied, and various staples that hold the parts to the base. The team of engineers at the Jaguar Jones Channel quickly determined that a mousetrap could function minus one of its parts. The team discarded the base of the mousetrap and made it functional on your humble narrator's desk. So wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, a fully functional mousetrap minus its base. A reasonable feeling of astonishment may visit the regular viewer when it is revealed that this concept is not original to the Jaguar Jones channel. It was first proposed by Keith Robertson of Harvard University at www.talkorigins.org. Furthermore, Behe himself actually replied. Here is what the intellectual buffoon had to say. That's an interesting reply, but you've just substituted another wooden base for the one you were given. The, the trap still can't function without a base. Furthermore, you were essentially given a disassembled mousetrap which you then assembled. All of the parts were pre-adapted to each other by an intelligent agent. The point that has to be addressed is how do you start with no pieces, at least none specifically designed to be part of a mousetrap, and proceed to a functioning, irreducibly complex trap. Does any of this sound familiar? Once it was shown that his mousetrap analogy falls apart when the objective mind is applied, he simply changes the rules of the scientific method to support the conclusion that he has already decided he will assert regardless of evidence. This is called moving the goalpost, and it is a common yik tactic. It works like this. The yik will say, in order for me to be wrong, criterias A, B, and C must be met. The rational thinker then easily meets criterias A, B, and C, but then the yik insists that criterias D through BL must also be met. Once Behe realized that he had in fact been shown to be wrong, he throws in words like pre-adapted and intelligent agent to show that he wasn't wrong at all, and even though his argument has been defeated in on his original terms, he changes the terms so he can maintain his delusion of an invisible man living in the sky. However, if a bacteria flagellum does have pre-adapted parts provided by an intelligent agent, it is incumbent on the person making the claim to provide the fucking evidence! It's called the burden of proof! Look it up, you infected, ingrown hair on the ass end of humanity! <clears throat> In part two of How to Own a Yik Irreducible Complexity, we will examine the fact that irreducible complexity is about as scientific as a gay-looking pangolin is heterosexual. This is Jaguar Jones saying good day and happy owning.